Welcome back to the barbershop. It's me, T. Holla. I'm my man, True, here. I'm with our new friend, Brendan Hill. That's right. From the fame group, group Blues Traveler. Thank you for joining us here with us. Yeah, you're very welcome. That's a great pleasure to be here. Give us, give us a little history about your, your history with Blues Traveler. The Grammy Award winning Blues Traveler. That's right. Uh, we were a high school band. We started out in New Jersey. Uh, we all went to high school together. Uh, moved to New York uh, right out of high school. And uh, we got signed at 19. And we put out our first record at 20. Um, and then our fourth record came out in 95. And we won a band with that. We saw him run around. And it sold seven million copies, and we were all of a sudden we were traveling around the world in big tour buses, tractor trailers, and uh, living the dream. And uh, that continued on for another twenty years. <laughs> yeah, very so, successful. Very one of the mainstays in the music industry. Absolutely. Yeah, right. well, through those twenty years, you know, my dad he plays in a band kind of off and on. He plays bass guitar, and I know his little band is hard for them to keep the same members. Did you guys have any of that stuff going on? Well, we had one tragic thing. Uh, we actually had it behind the music on VH1. Uh, we lost our bass player in 1999. He died of an overdose, um, which was very sad. And uh, unfortunately, yeah, the life lesson is, you know, don't move down to New Orleans if you have uh, you know, problems with addiction. So uh, <laughs> really, we, um, seriously. We uh, started up again in 2000. We hired a new keyboard player, a new bass player, and um, just started the machine back up again. And uh, even though it was a different sound, we um, we just carried on because we knew that uh, that's what Bobby, our original bass player, would have And uh, so we kept going on. And it's been actually, you know, a new sounding band, but we still play the old music. But um, we've been really creative in the last uh, 15 years with the new guys. That's awesome. They're still the new guys. I yeah, still the new guys. Yeah, right. Compared to you. Um, <laughs> But you're still recording, still doing music, still traveling, but you're now in Washington. You're actually out in Bainbridge Island, and you've started a new business, Paper and Leaf. Now, I know it's going to be hard for our, our friends and family out there to understand how a rock musician got involved in the legal marijuana business. So can you please tell us about Paper and Leaf and how you got involved in it? Of course, yeah. It wasn't that far of a leap. But, uh, so uh, in 2012, uh, initiative I-502, which basically legalized recreational marijuana, uh, took place in Washington State. Um, and so, you know, I was, uh, I'd been touring around for about 25 years, you know, riding around the tour bus, and I was just kind of looking for what the next step was going to be. I still love playing music. I still love, love the thrill of being on stage. But just, you know, what's an alternate thing that I could, you know, possibly put my energy into? So I-502 passed the initiative for re uh, recreational marijuana. And I thought, man, there's going to be one shop on Bainbridge Island, just one, uh, initially. And, you know, I should go for it, man, because uh, I'm, I have a family. I've got, um, you know, a uh, wife and kids that uh, I miss when I'm on tour. So, man, it'd be cool if I had my little entrepreneurial business opened up. Um, and how cool it would be to be the, you know, pot shop owner on the <laughs> Right. So, uh, so my wife and I talked about it a little bit, and, uh, you know, we're a little apprehensive yeah. because it is such a small island. Um, and that we were determined to do it right. So um, she introduced me to a common friend, Stephen Kessler, who moved from East Coast as well a few years back. Um, and so we kind of came together and we were like, oh man, we've got the same vision. This would be a lot easier if two of us, you know, work it together. And um, so we started to uh, design and figure out, you know, what Bainbridge um, Pot Shop should look like. And um, I tell you, it's been a really fun journey. There's been a lot of hurdles and obstacles, sleepless nights, but we eventually opened in June, and it's a really cool venture. Uh, we tried to do it a little bit differently than some of the other shops that um, maybe some of your viewers have been to. Um, there's, uh, you know, instead of having everything behind a counter, kind of like in a pharmacy, where you walk in with the menu and then you say, this is what I want, wait in line, and that's what you get. In our shop, it's um, everything's sort of displayed like a gallery on the walls. So you've got these uh, sort of picture boxes with the product, and I brought a few here oh. with me. So this is the uh, lemon Kush from the Venus, and you can see the. Exactly. These are giveaways. These are giveaways. You can take these with us. Allegedly, if you still want it to. So these are some of the growers. You can see how they're starting to brand their product. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can see, like this guy's uh, lazy bee has this beautiful bag, which really draws your eye to it, but also shows the product inside. And here's another uh, kind of high-end display. Like that. So, I mean, what you're talking about is uh, just a new industry, which is really exciting. There's a lot of potential for branding. There's a lot of potential for expansion. Um, you know, we're looking now, in the next couple months, 
uh, to possibly open another shop <coughs> over here, or as uh, it starts becoming more um, legal in other states, possibly expanding, uh, doing franchises outside of Washington. It's, it's exciting. Yeah, it's yeah. Very cool. Very exciting. Well, I want to talk about some of the um, people you have coming through there, the characters. It is Bainbridge Island, so small island. But you would think that they might not be as receptive to the marijuana store. Do you get people coming in with scarves, the shades, and the hat, or what type of characters you, uh, you get coming through the shop? Well, initially, that's what we thought. We thought that people were going to come in like with their hats pulled down and like you know, sort of run in, run out. But um, that was one of the things that uh, we really wanted to kind of uh, take the stigma away from marijuana. Um, there's been such a negative uh, image for, uh, attached to marijuana for so many years, but it really is, um, if you think about it, uh, I think it's a lot safer than alcohol in a lot of ways. Um, it has so many medicinal benefits that are, you know, all but proven by the FDA. They're, they're one step away from actually allowing people to do research. I mean, there's so much great um, you know, anecdotal evidence that it helps with glaucoma, with people going through chemotherapy, um, it helps with uh, reduction of anxiety, increased appetite. Uh, so it just it's going to take all of us to uh, push forward for the government to deschedule it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 to allow medical research. Because it's, it's an amazing plan. As Jack Miller said, um, hemp could save the world. And I, I believe that's true as well. But for our store, we created, like I said, with um, sort of an open pal, like an art gallery. We've got a turntable. Wait, wait, wait. An art gallery in the weed store? Yeah. You've got to be kidding me. Like, do people just come and hang out and just stare at the pictures for hours at a time? Yeah. We've got, it's uh, moving. We've got it's really elm, moving. We've got an elm table that uh, is 12 foot long and it's beautiful. We've got these stools and um, I've got the turn, the turn table. I busted out my old record collection so we're playing like everything from uh, you know, Tribe Called Quest to uh, we've got Rod Stewart. We've got uh, you know old Led Zeppelin records. So when people come in they get that not only the uh, moral, uh, you know, memory sensation of like, oh yeah, this is like I was in college, man. Right. I remember that song. This oh, is an experience. You're giving people a real experience when they yeah. come to your store. And so uh, all types of people we've had, um, this, uh, these three ladies from a book club came in one day and they sat down and they talked with us for, for an hour, we talked with them for an hour. We brought out the products, we showed them, you know, we don't have to smoke it. Can, this is a uh, kind of like a massage oil. We've got like tinctures and... Um, Bombs and creams that uh, you don't have to ingest it. You don't even have to get high from it. There are CBD oils which are actually very positive and help with uh, inflammation, reduction of inflammation. So, I mean, there's just so much great information out there that we would love to share with people. So, when they come in, we can talk. Speaking of that, real quick before we get you out here, and, and I want to just talk to you about you know, the differences when it comes to these kind of things. I know back in my old school days, when we used way to back, do, way, way, back. way back, you used to just say, hey, I, I want to buy some weed, That's some twenty dollars right. weed, and you give some weed. Twenty sack, a, 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 a dub sack, yeah. what they called it, right? And so it would just be weed, and you don't, you know, this weed might make you go to sleep, or this weed might make you stay up. But what is like the difference? Well, you have sativa and indica. Indica. Yeah. And so so uh, sativa is kind of the euphoric. Uh, gets your mind kind of racing a little bit, and you're, you know, you're more apt to like go out and, you know, write a write a song or like work in your garden, be active, go hiking, that kind of thing. Uh, the indica is more indica in the couch. So you're uh, <laughs> in the uh, couch. Remember that, Barbara. So, so you want to kind of hang out. You want to watch a watch a movie. You want to listen to music. Want to chill with friends. You want to like, you know, laugh, giggle, get the munchies, that kind of thing. Um, and there's, there's uh, also a lot of hybrids, which are right down the middle, or they can lean either towards the indica or the sativa. Um, and so what, what's great about all these growers now is that they're listing whether they're sativa or indica. So when somebody goes in a store that hasn't tried the product in maybe 5, 10 years, 15 years even, they can see, okay, this is sativa, this is going to make me feel uplifted. Or this is indica, it's going to make me feel you know, more relaxed and um, uh, sedated. And we've got all of our knowledgeable staff who can say, you know what, I think this is, let, let, let's stay away from this one, let's go to this one. Because you haven't tried in a while, this might be a little bit too strong for you. And so it's really preparing the person. It's like a sommelier with a wine. It's like, oh, you're going to have a nice steak tonight, why don't you go with a red wine? Or, you know, fish, why don't you go with white? You know, Cheetos get this. <laughs> <laughs> this one right here. So, uh, so for us, it's all about pairing the people, uh, making sure that they have a good, pleasant experience, and to, uh, you know, so they, they come back and we create that loyalty and they know 
this shop cares about me. It's not just about pushing product. It's about saying, you know, if you want to try this product, here's what's going to fit the best for you. Perfect, perfect. Brendan Hill, guys from Paper Leaf, tell them where they can find you at. Uh, Bainbridge Island, it's uh, 8040 Day Road on Bainbridge Island. We've got a free shuttle. Uh, just call 206 379 2560. <coughs> or you can um, uh, you know, check us out online, paperandleaf.com. And we're also going to have uh, Cannabis 101 classes, seminars. Uh, we're going to try to do those uh, bi weekly. So um, anytime you guys want to come in, check it out. Right on. Thank you for joining us here in the barbershop. Thank right you. Appreciate it. Appreciate Round of applause for Bennett.